Why do you have three computers? Oh, I know. It's crazy. I do have three computers. Before, I had four computers. Uh, now, I only have three computers. I have three computers because I use computers for my job. Oh. So, I have one computer for my house, mm. my one laptop computer for my house, and mm. I always keep that computer at my house. So, um, it's heavy. It's a MacBook Pro. And I don't like to carry it, so I leave it at home. And I have a MacBook Air. It's very light. It's not heavy. And I use my MacBook Air when I travel, when I go to school, when um, I go downtown to a cafe. So, yeah, I have one computer for home and one computer for when I travel. And how about the other one? Oh, the other computer. The other computer is old. It's also a MacBook Pro, and it's seven years old. Wow. Yeah, it still works. It works really well, but I use it as a backup computer. So sometimes I need a computer in case one computer fails. Uh -huh. Also, sometimes my friends need a computer, and I lend my computer to my friends. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's, it's easy. I like that. What do you do if you need something that's on the other computer? Well, I use cloud computing. Mm -hmm. So I use Dropbox. So Dropbox shares everything. So all computers are linked mm -hmm. and they share all the files. So it's no problem. How about phones? How many do you have? I have three phones also for my job. Uh, I have an iPhone, I have a Samsung Galaxy, and I have a Nokia Windows phone. Oh, really? Yeah. Which one do you like the best? Mm, that's tough. I think I like the Samsung Galaxy the best because it's bigger and it's easy to read, but the iPhone has good apps. I like the apps on the iPhone, and the iPhone is very reliable. So it always works. Um, so, yeah. How about the Nokia? The Nokia is also a good phone. Uh, it's a Windows phone, and I travel a lot. So when I travel, I always take the Nokia phone, and I use a new SIM card in the country, and then that is my phone mm -hmm. when I travel. I usually leave my Galaxy phone or my iPhone at home. You say you use your phone for work. How? Oh, so I create websites, mm -hmm. and so I need to check how websites look on different phones. So every time I make a website, I check it on the Nokia phone, I check it on the Samsung phone, I check it on the iPhone. So I make sure the website works on all smartphones. Does the website often have problems with one phone or a different phone? Usually not. Usually everything is okay. But sometimes media files like audio files or video files do not work on the phones. So sometimes I have to change things. But usually it works. Ah. How about you? How many computers do you have? Well, at home... We have one laptop, and it's kind of big, so I don't usually take it out with me. And then we have a personal computer, and we also have a tablet, an iPad. Oh, yeah. And I don't use the iPad very much. It's usually used by my daughter. She's two, and she loves to play games on the iPad. Right. So it's an expensive toy. <laughs> <laughs> so your daughter likes the iPad. Mm -hmm. You like the laptop? I like the laptop, yes. And the personal computer? The personal computer is my husband's. And we also use it as the family computer when we want to watch a movie or watch a TV show, something like that. Oh, wow. Sounds good. And phones? 
Phones. Well, I have my own phone. I have a Sony phone. It's an Xperia. And I like it. It's big, so sometimes my fingers can't reach all the buttons, but I can watch videos on it. I like that. And when I leave the country, I can't use it in other countries, but I can use the Wi-Fi. So that's convenient. Yeah, that is convenient. Okay, thanks a lot, Sarah. Thank you. So, Sarah, I see you eat soup every day at work. Why are you eating soup every day? That's because I love to cook soup. So you, you make the soup? Yes, it's very easy to make. So you cook it, and then you just bring it to work every day? Yeah, I just make a lot on Monday, and then I bring it to work every day of the week. Oh, nice. So how do you make the soup? What's your, your secret? Well, I like to cook very easy, so I buy meat that's already cut up, usually chicken, and then some rice, usually brown rice, and then I buy some vegetables. So after I bought the ingredients, I chop them up, and I put them all together in water until it boils and add some seasoning. Okay, so you say the water boils, so as soon as the water boils, that's when you put in all the ingredients? Yes, that's right. So you don't put in the ingredients before the water boils? No, I guess it's just easier for the water to be hot, because then the vegetables and the meat cook a little faster. So how do you give the soup flavoring? Um, I usually add salt and pepper, maybe some garlic, and depending on the type of soup, either maybe some soy sauce or lemon juice. Okay. Do you put in the flavoring after you put in the ingredients or before you put in the ingredients? Um, maybe after, but usually right about all at the same time. Okay. So I just put everything in at one time. And then after you cook the soup? Do you put the soup in the refrigerator? Do you let it sit outside? I usually eat some right then. <laughs> and I also put it in containers for the week. But I let it sit in the containers out on the counter for a while for it to cool okay. before I put it in the refrigerator. All right. And so you don't put it in the refrigerator until it is cool? Until it's about room temperature. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And then how do you heat it up? Do you heat it up in a pot or do you heat it up in the microwave? In the microwave. It's oh. the easiest. Yeah. Oh, nice. So you make enough for five meals? Uh, maybe. Sometimes. Um, if I think I will get tired of eating it during the week, then maybe I'll just make enough for three or four meals. But if it's some kind that I think is really delicious and I know I'll want to eat it every day, then I'll make a lot. Well, if that happens... When you make the soup, you can make it for six or seven and give me a bowl. Okay. I'll do that next time. Oh, great. Thanks. Hey, Darcy, we're having a party this Saturday. You want to come? Yeah, that sounds fun. Okay, great. Uh, when is it? It is at 10 o'clock. Do you think you can make it? Um, as long as I can get a ride. Oh, I think I can pick you up. Where Where do you live? I live about 10 minutes down the street Oh, really? From here? Yes, from here. Okay, so you're in the east part of town. Yes, that's right, um, and around the corner from the gas station. Okay, oh, nice. So if you can meet me at the gas station, I can just pick you up there. Sure, as long as you give me a call before, I'll forget. Okay, don't worry, I'll do that. So the party is uh, starting at 10, so I'll pick you up around 9.45. Is that okay? Yeah, that sounds great. Can I bring something? Uh, yeah, you can bring whatever you want. Um, you don't have to bring anything, uh, but if you want to bring your own dish or your own food, that's fine. But there will be some food provided. It's kind of your choice. I can bring brownies unless someone has special dietary needs. No, I'm sure everybody's going to love to eat brownies, so please definitely bring the brownies. All right. What about curry? I love cooking curry. If you want to make curry, you can make curry. That would be awesome. Okay. How about spicy Thai curry? I think you can make spicy Thai curry. I think everybody would like that. Okay. Sounds great. Now, do you play sports? Um, if no one is throwing a ball at my face, yes. <laughs> okay. 
Well, we will play uh, soccer if we have enough people. So we're hoping to get enough people. So would you play? Sure. Sounds great. Okay, great. And um, if the weather's not nice, though, uh, then maybe, maybe we will postpone it and we'll have it on next Saturday or maybe next month. But it looks like the weather's going to be nice. If the weather looks bad, uh, I'll give you a call. Okay. Can you call before 8 a.m.? Yes, I will definitely let you know. Actually, if we think the weather is going to be bad, we will call you the night before so you don't have to worry about it. All right. That will be perfect. Okay, great. Also, if you want to bring friends or you want to invite somebody else, you can also invite them as well. It's a company party, but but it's friends and family, so you can bring other people as well. All right. Should they also bring things for the party? If they want to, they can bring stuff, but they don't have to. Okay, cool. I'll call my friends. Okay, but uh, your friends have to go there on by themselves because my car is really small and I can only give you a ride. Oh, if you can only give me a ride, I don't think I can invite my friends. Oh, really? They don't have a ride? No, we all live really far away. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'll ask if I can get the company van and if I can get the company van then I can give everybody a ride Ooh, if you can give everyone a ride I'll invite all of my friends okay how many friends are we talking about how many friends can fit in your vehicle <laughs> maybe six or seven okay I think I can call some friends well if you can get your friends to come then we will definitely have a soccer match all right how many teams will we make I'm sure we'll just have two but we'll have a big game okay as long as my team can win. <laughs> well, I can't promise that. It's on. So, Monica, you do Tai Chi. Ah, yes. I've just joined the Tai Chi club. What made you join the Tai Chi club? Well, I wanted to do something that was a lot different to what I usually do, which is high-impact sports like basketball and tennis. So you wanted to do something that was slower? Yeah, well... I don't usually um, enjoy exercise that is quite slow, um, such as yoga, but I decided to join this club and I'm really enjoying it. So what exactly is Tai Chi? What, what do you do in Tai Chi? Well, there are different types of Tai Chi. Um, there's the original Tai Chi, which involves quite quick, fast movements. And then there's a slower form of Tai Chi, um, which is quite popular in Japan. I think it's called Mr. Young Tai Chi. And that involves very slow, um, pronounced movements. And that's the Tai Chi that I'm doing. Um, how do you feel like after you do Tai Chi? Do you feel tired? Do you feel energetic? Um, after I've done Tai Chi, I feel quite energetic, actually. Um, I don't really feel tired because I haven't had a really hard workout. But I feel that um, my mind is very relaxed and very focused and I'm very um, motivated to do whatever I need to do for the rest of the day. Now, uh, you actually are a tennis coach, so you teach sports would you recommend tai chi for other athletes yeah i do recommend tai chi for other athletes it's quite difficult to know exactly how you would benefit from tai chi and how it can directly relate to a specific sport but i i've heard that it works on your energy levels um, and focuses your mind so that everything's in balance and I think that can help any kind of sport because um, even in a sport like tennis, um, it's important to have balance when you're hitting the ball, when you're um, volleying, when you're getting ready for a smash. It actually involves um, having balance in terms of where your center of gravity is. So yeah, the concepts are similar. So, Monica, a minute ago we were talking about Tai Chi and about how it helps longevity, helps you live a long life. Um, one time when I was in Bangkok, I met a guy, and he was doing Tai Chi, 
and he looked really young, but he said the secret to his old life, he said the secret to looking young was Tai Chi and cold showers. He took a cold shower every morning. Oh, wow. Could you do that? Ah, no, I don't think I could actually. Yeah, you know, I actually tried it for a while. I tried it for about a week and I did feel so energized and it was easy in Bangkok because it's really warm, but I, I couldn't keep it up, especially now that I'm in the cold climate. There's no way. Yeah, I remember when I was young, my mother used to teach me to um, splash my face with cold water in the morning um, because she believed that helped wake you up. And I remember as a child not liking that at all because I just found it too cold. Right, right. So I preferred to splash my face with warm water. So have you heard of any other secrets to having a long life? Um, yeah, I've heard of uh, quite a few different secrets to having a long life. Um, I guess one secret that a lot of different cultural groups seem to share is uh, diet. If you take the Japanese as an example, um, and Japanese people do have um, a long life expectancy in comparison to other people from other countries. Um, I think the Japanese eat a diet that's quite low in fat and reasonably low in salt as well. And I think their fluid intake is quite healthy um, because they drink a lot of green tea, which has antioxidants in it. And they drink a lot of miso soup, which has a lot of vegetables in it and is made from fermented barley. So... I think that's very healthy. I've also heard that people in the Mediterranean, they also often have a, a long lifespan in certain regions and maybe the combination of wine, just a little wine, not too much, but wine and olive oil and then a lot of uh, fish, seafood, is also maybe beneficial to a long life. Yeah, that's true. I've heard... Um, French people, for example, live a long life and that has often been said due to a glass of red wine a day. And um, I know people think differently about alcohol and its effect on the body um, these days. Right. Yeah, because alcohol used to be considered quite a bad thing. Um and discouraged in all forms but now people tend to think that a glass a day is actually quite beneficial to, to your health. I've also actually heard that laughter, that people that laugh a lot tend to live longer. Oh I, yeah I've heard that too actually because um, laughing releases natural endorphins and I think that helps you physiologically and also I think psychologically you're happier if you're laughing so yeah I think um, that long life is related to um, how you're feeling and I think um, a lot of it's psychological um, as well as um, physical for example how much you're eating and what types of food you're eating yeah I guess I'm kind of in the same boat but I just don't know if I laugh that much <laughs> maybe I'm in trouble <laughs> So Darcy, we are going to talk about some common phrases in English, and all of these phrases actually use what's called the noun clause, which is kind of a tricky grammatical structure, but we just want to discuss about the meaning of the phrase, and do you think it's true or not true? Okay. Okay, so the first one is, it's not what you know, but who you know. Please explain. Um, I think that means like... Even though you might learn a lot of information or have a lot of experience, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll be successful. I think some of it comes from the connections that you have with people and who they know. So sometimes finding a job isn't being the person that has the most knowledge of the subject. It might just be having an acquaintance that has a connection with someone else that can hook you up with that job or a person that can get you to where you want to be. Yeah. So it really is who you know and not what you know. Right.
Right. And you think it's it's true. It holds true in life. I definitely think so. Or I think it kind of depends on the culture. Um, in the United States, there's the belief that you can be successful from working hard. Like, mm. you know, the American dream, all you have to do is work hard. But it's not necessarily about, you know, having connections, having money, knowing people. It's you can earn your way up. But in other cultures, um, it's more about uh, who is older than you, and you have to kind of follow a certain path. And it comes, I think some of that comes through the people that you know, those connections, um, because it's just how the society is set up more. So in that case, it's more who you know rather than what you know. What you know, correct. So it just depends on culture. Right. Yeah, good point. Okay, so uh, here's another one. What you don't know won't hurt you or what you don't know can't hurt you. Yes. I think another way of saying that is ignorance is bliss. So if you don't know you're making a mistake, you know, you can't be hurt by it. So sometimes like if we say something to someone, um, but we're making a joke or something, someone might get offended because of their own experiences or background. So you don't know what's going to affect them. Because you're kind of ignorant. You just have no idea. So that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I think that's one way to look at it. And another way to look at it is just also like um, sometimes when you don't know about things, because you don't know about it, then you can't get depressed. You can't get upset. It can't bother you. Mm, yes. Similar like ignorance is bliss. So, you know, yeah, what you don't know can't hurt you. So maybe it's sometimes best not to know everything. I agree. Okay, so the next one is, what comes around goes around. Yes. Um, I think that's more like kind of, it says like the energy that you put out comes back to you like good karma. So if you help someone or you treat someone well, then that can come back to you where, you know, maybe you help someone and later on someone tries to give that back to you and helps you. Right, exactly. And also maybe if you do something bad, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. So maybe if, you know, you steal money or you, you know, you do something bad, then maybe something bad later will happen to you because you put that negative energy out. Right, it's going to come back and get you. Actually, I love that one, what comes around goes around. Like if you do something bad to somebody, there's a really good chance that somebody's they're going to come back and do something bad to you mm -hmm. or something bad is going to happen to you. So you should always be nice and good I agree. or else the badness is going to come back around. Okay. Another one is you get what you pay for. Yeah. I think that means, um, like the quality of something. So if I spend more money, then I can get a better quality item, something that will last longer. But if you don't, pay a lot of money, maybe something will break down really quickly. Yeah, exactly. So like if you buy something that's really cheap to save money, you're not going to get a lot of value out of it. Yeah. So maybe it's better to pay something that's high quality. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it costs more in the beginning, like if you only buy something cheap and you might have to replace it many, many times. So eventually you end up paying more than you would have if you invested more to begin with. Yeah. So true. Okay, so the next two are not really deep ones. They're more just kind of like phrases that we say for situations. Mm -hmm. One of them is, what you do is up to you. What does that mean? I just think that means you have the power to make your own decisions. No one can tell you what to do. Either, you know, you decide to do it or you don't. Right. So the responsibility is on you and no one can force you to do something that you don't want to do. Right. So you, you don't have to worry about uh, outside influence or to get permission or anything like that. Exactly. You have total freedom. Okay. And then the last one, this one's sometimes hard to explain to students. It is what it is. <laughs> we use this a lot in conversation. Somebody will be like, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, how would you explain that? Hmm. I just think it kind of means that's just the rule. That's just how things are. So you can't really question. You can't really change things. You just have to accept it. Like this is what it is and there's nothing you can do to change it. Right. And I love how like you, you actually used another noun clause to explain it. Like that is how it is or that's how things are. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So that's how things are. It is what it is, is used when you really can't explain something 
Um, that's <laughs> what it is. So it's undefinable almost. It, it's very – everybody knows what you're talking about, but it's very hard to define mm, actually. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, another one is be careful of what you ask for. Mm. Please explain. Be careful of what you ask for. I think like there's a second – part to that be careful what you ask for because it may come true yes so it's if you you know you have expectations and you get them like maybe you wish for a new job and you get the new job and you're really excited but then you know you might get what you asked for but it might not be what you expected so oh i get it i get paid more money yay but then it turns out you're really stressed out you have a lot of extra work to do you're not happier you're not happy you were happier in your former situation so even though we get what we think we want can be a bad thing cuz it might be worse than we you know expected yeah so true anyway thanks for for sharing those were good explanations thanks you're a good teacher i try <laughs> So what are some talents you wish you had? Mm. Um, I would say this talent spreads a long time back, and it's always something I'm very envious about. Um, I don't have the best memory, and so I really wish that my talent was to remember a lot easier or even have photographic memory. Um, I think that would be very useful, especially as a student during exams where we're able to read quite a bit and remember all of it. Um, I think that talent would be interesting to have because um, I wouldn't always be forgetting daily things like my keys to my apartment right. or, um, <laughs> so for example, my water bottle every single time I leave for class. Um, I think memory is very important and it's very good to remember certain conversations with people. For example, uh, sometimes I might have a conversation with someone and completely forget that I talked about that topic and then just be reminded of it when I talk to that person the next time. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think uh, having a better memory or photographic memory would be great for those situations. Yeah, definitely. And yourself, uh, what are some talents that you wish you had? I wish that I could dance. Like, I have no rhythm at all. Yeah. (laughs) So, like, I feel so stupid when, like, if um, we go out or we listen to music, Mm -hmm. I just look really goofy when I try to dance. Uh, but I feel like dancing, so I still try, but yeah. it just it looks horrible. So, yeah, I wish I had more, like, rhythm and the ability to, like, learn mm-hmm. dance moves, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would say that dancing is definitely a talent that some people have. Uh-huh. Um, likewise, I do not have any rhythm, so <laughs> I'll join you on that same yeah. <laughs> Even though I like to dance, I don't dance very well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I wish that I was better at sports as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really like downhill skiing, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, but I never skied a lot. Like my dad, he, um, skied professionally when he was young. Okay. And I'm kind of like bitter that he didn't take me up to the hills more than he did. Yeah. Because if I, if I had started at a young age, I could be really good right now, Mm -hmm. but I didn't. So I'm, I'm a casual skier, but I really wish that I could be like, uh, Better than average in something, especially yeah. a sport. Got it, got it. Do you play any sports uh, besides uh, basketball? Um, so basketball is my main sport. I used to play a little bit of volleyball mm-hmm. uh, when I was in uh, high school. And so I played the position of setter. Um, and so that was very fun. Um, it took a lot of accuracy. Um, I think uh, if, I had, if I had to be a little bit more talented, it would be at jumping. Um, because if I was able to jump a lot more, I would be able to fake my sets and just hit the ball down on the opponent's side. Mm-hmm. And so that would be a cool talent to have if I was able to jump maybe five to ten more inches higher than I usually <laughs> did. I still remember that um, my vertical was 26 inches when I was in grade nine or grade ten. And so um, maybe if I added a couple more inches onto that, I would have been able to perform in more creative ways. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So can you dunk a basketball? Uh, that depends on how high the rim is. Uh, if it's five feet or six feet, definitely. But on a standard regulation net, which is probably nine or 9.5 feet, um, I cannot. Okay. Um, but maybe if I had the talent of jumping extremely high, um, I would be able to b- dunk a basketball. But no. Can you dribble with your left hand? Of course. <laughs> I can dribble with my left hand. I can dribble with my right hand. I can dribble between my legs. Um, I've done a lot of different types of basketball drills when I was on the high school team. And so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty good at handling the basketball, um, shooting, driving to the net, um, 
and passing it a lot, quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, pretty efficient with the basketball. Yeah, that's uh, impressive. Just can't dunk. Okay, yeah. <laughs> can you shoot with your left hand? Mm, no, I cannot. I can't shoot with my left hand. I could do a layup with my left hand, but uh, I can't shoot the ball naturally like a free throw or a three-point shot with my left hand. Okay. What exactly is a layup? A layup is uh, when you drive towards the net, you're allowed to take two steps while holding the basketball. Uh -huh. And so that's usually how people, um, when they're very close to the net, they do a layup, or they're also able to convert a layup into a dunk. So they're able to take two steps and dunk towards the basketball oh, okay. net. Um, and so, uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, a little bit of basketball knowledge. Yeah, really. got yeah. it. <laughs> so Meg, you're getting married soon. How, how are things going? Mm, things are going pretty well. We have a lot of planning to do. I bet. So have you hired a band yet? No, we haven't hired a band yet. My brother has some friends who are in a band, so he's going to ask them. Oh, cool. And uh, have you gotten a caterer for the wedding? Yes, we have gotten a caterer because the food is very important, so we ordered it in advance. Oh, what kind of food? We're going to have traditional American food. Oh, nice, nice. So, have you bought a dress yet? Yes, of course I have bought a dress. That's the most important part, so last week I picked up my new dress. Have you tried it on yet? Yes, I've tried it on many times already. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> have you shown it to your groom-to-be? No, I haven't shown it to my groom-to-be because it has to be a surprise on the wedding day. Oh, that's right. That's right. So uh, have you ordered the flowers? No, not yet. I haven't ordered the flowers because I'm waiting for some special flowers uh, from the florist, so still waiting. And have you sent out the invitations? Yes, we have sent out the invitations. We sent them out uh, maybe a month ago. Oh, cool. So then I assume you have booked the hall. Yes, we have booked the hall because we wanted to have it at a special hall. So we booked it probably six months ago. Okay, cool. Well, the only one problem, I didn't get an invite. Am I invited to oh, your wedding? Oh, I brought the invitation with me today. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. So Adam, today we're talking about do-overs. So what is something that you wish you would have done over, for example, maybe something in your university life? Uh, yeah, there are a few things. I might have I might change my major. Um, I studied education, and while I enjoy what I'm doing right now, um, I my my free time I I really like watching movies about uh, science and astronomy, and if I would go back to school and uh, start my studies over, I'd probably study something along those lines, astronomy and uh, metaphysics or something. I think that those topics are really interesting and on the cutting edge of science and um, just just fascinating to explore. Interesting. Anything else you wish you would have done? I might have been more involved in the the sports clubs at my my school for example the american football team i played in in high school um but uh, in college i i wanted to play but i didn't have the mm, motivation to to push me over the edge to actually go out and and really put my heart into it i went to one uh training uh, day and kind of tried out but I, I didn't really pursue it as much as I would have liked. I think it would have been fun to be part of that culture and that environment. How about something that you did do that maybe now you wish you hadn't? Um, I pierced my ears in, in high school because uh, that was the cool thing to do. But now I don't wear earrings, and uh, yeah, looking back on it, kind of just a silly thing to do. That uh, trying to follow the trends that that uh, you know trends usually pass. So um, yeah, that would be something that I wouldn't do again. Anything else you would have changed? I might have. Uh, made different decisions about my my 
girlfriends at the time. Um, I had a I had a really good girlfriend in in the beginning of of college and and things didn't work out because of uh, a variety of reasons. But I think if we would have worked on it, um, we could have we could have made it made it happen and and uh so yeah that's something i think about sometimes about life in college it's kind of it's always you know college love is kind of crazy thing so uh yeah we're 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 too much like kids i guess i think at that age okay thanks adam Hi, Sarah. Hi. Today we're talking about do-overs. So if you had a time machine and you could go back to your college years, is there anything that you might uh, change or do differently? I really wish that I would have had a chance to study abroad. I chose the wrong major initially. I was a nursing major for two years and worked really hard at a major I was really bad at. And then after two years, I switched schools and switched majors. And because of that, I had so many credits to take that I couldn't study abroad or do really any extra classes that were fun. Hmm. That must have been challenging. Where would you have liked to study abroad? Really anywhere. I've always loved to travel, so um, I would have been open to going anywhere. So you said you studied nursing. What what would you have studied otherwise? Well, I first went into nursing because everyone, since I was really little, told me that I would be a good nurse. So I thought it was my calling in life. And then after taking lots and lots of science classes, which I'm really bad at, I decided to switch majors to education. And then I ended up liking that major, so I'm really happy that I switched is there any other major that you would find interesting that you might study if you went back, or you're satisfied with education? I'm glad I did education because I really like that work-wise, but if I had to go with things that I'm interested in, I probably would have been some sort of art major. Both my siblings are artists, so it kind of runs in the family a little bit. What kind of art do you like? Uh, mainly dance but um, I also was really into music growing up, so musical instruments and singing. So do you have any friends that were interested in art or, or dance that uh, you had in, in those times? Not really, no, actually. Do you wish that you, you if you were in a, a group of people that liked the similar, similar things that you might have pursued different interests mm, definitely I wish I would have done more with dance I was a ballerina for 12 years and I gave up on that when I was 14 because I got to the level where I either had to train professionally to do that um, for a job or stay in a class where the younger girls would keep moving up and so at that time I quit and although I don't wish I was still doing ballet I wish I would have continued some kind of dance so, Sarah, any funny haircuts or anything like that? Actually, yes. Uh, one week before I moved away to college, I cut my hair boy short. And um, then after that, like during my first semester, I dyed it all different shades of red. And my hair has actually been pretty much every length and every natural-ish color. Wow. How did your friends and family respond to your red hair? My mom didn't like it so much. Uh, she thought I was going to dye it like a natural red color, but it was more of a fuchsia red color. So uh, she didn't like it very much. But uh, my friends and like my siblings understood because I've always been very different and didn't really care what other people thought about how I looked. How long did you like it? Uh, for a while, until I wanted change. I love change, so I'd always switch it to something else. Wow, that's great. Thanks, Sarah. 